Hi guys and welcome back to our let's play of Pillars of the Earth. We just freed our ourselves from the chains and now we have to see how we get out of here. Beautiful, someone is taking care of it. Hard to believe that there is care and kindness in its master. Near the gate, Matthew said. And the brother, I must stay strong for him. Okay. So let's try to get over here. Without waking that guy up. And near the gate somewhere is... Uh, oh, there are people. Okay. More of Percy Hamlet's henchmen. They are guarding the gate. If I try to pass them on foot, I would be too slow. Where is the red scarf? Benches? Over there. Okay. So we have to come up here. Cross the yard. Walk up the wall. Let's go up the wall. Hope they don't see us. Maybe we had to go up the other side. Well, looks okay. I have to say that battle was a bit short for my taste. Inspect. William's henchmen. Being from political ambitious noble family, William Hamley commands a small army of his own. He likes to keep his three most trusted men by his side, Walter, Hugh and X. X. And ugly Gervais. Walter, Hugh, X and ugly Ger Gervais. The latter two are knights known for their violence and loyalty. Their names alone strike fear in the hearts of their enemies. Walter was once William's instructor and taught him to fight and ride since William was a boy. Now Walter is his bodyguard and right hand man. Okay. The knights weren't prepared and Let's the try to get over here. Chicken. What I wouldn't do for a good kill right now. I found it. Matthew's piece of cloth. Yeah, now pull it up and get the weapons. Okay, we are back. Father's dagger, take. Um, let's see. William's horse. Pet it. Pet it. Careful! He doesn't seem to like that. Okay, remove the saddlebag. Doesn't what are like you that doing? either. The horse nearly woke the guard. The knot is too tight. Cut the saddle back loose. So it will calm down. Now we can pet it maybe. Some oat I found in William's saddlebags. Oh now I can give him the oats. Oh, you look hungry. Want to eat? Richard. But where do we go? To Winchester, of course. We need to find Father and talk to the King. They must find out what's happening here. Now climb on. It won't eat forever. Okay, so this is we five weeks earlier since we saw them in Winchester. Okay, let's now go. Me. Let's get, get the, the hell out of here. Come off. Oh, they are coming after us. So, Shiring, where do we go now? Here, right into the forest. that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. 
It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. Okay. Um, right to Winchester. We headed toward Winchester. The king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. Okay. Uh, not very okay, but the yeah. The sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, the hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care. Nice. Ride on, don't trust her. Take the risk, trust her to help Richard. Take the risk. We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There, I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. Okay, maybe the a bad choice. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. Promise of a re reward? Insist on helping Richard. Um, insist on helping Richard. I raised my voice and repeated more urgently that if we didn't act right now, Richard might die. At my words, the woman seemed to wake up from her absent-mindedness. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. The woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologized. It's a tough world and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. Uh, run or fight? If I run, William will, st will be left behind, I guess. Fight against two persons? I think I have no chance. I try to run. I waited for the moment her eyes were on the door again. Then I dashed towards Richard, but a hand grabbed my wrist. It was too big and rough to be hers. The man threw me aside and I landed hard on the floor. My head spun. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. Hmm, weird. We heard the whinnying of William's horse and the stomping of hooves from outside. We stood frozen until Richard told me to go and have a look. As I did, the outlaws were long on their way, and our mount with them. The hut probably hadn't belonged to them in the first place, but at least it meant a roof over our heads for the night. Damn. The fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear. But it seemed to work. 
For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept, but soon I fell asleep too. Okay. So let's keep on trucking. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between, but we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare. Facing William, you spoke for yourself. You enraged William by serving him dry bread. You praised Richard for his courage. You successfully escaped Earl Castle. You trusted the woman on the road and got robbed by her. You burned Richard's wound out and made it to Winchester. So let's see what expects us in Winchester. Uh, did my moon monitor just went go out? No, it didn't. <laughs> it was so long the dark screen, the black screen, that I thought my monitor went out. We made it. They can't harm us anymore, can they? After all, there are laws in place to protect us here, right? <laughs> I think so. But we shouldn't risk finding out. Then let's go. Where are you going? To our townhouse, of course. Can I move already? Oh, no, I can't do anything. Uh, where is my cursor? Something is not right. I can't see my mouse. Ah, no. Now things are happening. Townhouse. Oh, a lot of stuff. Tavern, church, first south gate, Winchester Castle. Tavern, house, inn, house. East gate, house, mint. Into cathedral. Hmm. Okay, let's try going to the town. Uh, our townhouse. We stayed here often. Father taking care of business, and I taking care of the uh, bishop, the chancellor, and all the barons at court. One of them must remember us. Okay, let's get there. Ali, there's someone here. Maybe it's father. Do you think so? Well. They must have put him somewhere. Um. Knock. Oh, this part of the game is really slow. I don't know why. Um. Yeah, somehow. My PC is screwing up. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything. Oh, now I could tap out. Now I'm back in. Okay, it was hanging. No, oh, it still is screwing up. Hmm. Okay, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm going to end this episode here. Something is not right. Um, I will see what's going on, and then I will continue next time. Um, yeah, sorry for this inconvenience. Ah, now it moved again. Yeah, but something is not right. And uh, I I think I'm at about uh, 20 minutes from the episode. So it's not too short. It's not too bad. And I will continue next time. I um, hope you guys enjoy. I'm gonna see if I can solve this. And see you back next time. Bye.